friends, it's Pat Sloan here. So it is on the on the calendar, UFO Friday. So instead of Tackle a Tuesday, I just put some UFO stuff for today. But before that, we are going to uh, I'm going to show you a little bit more of Heart of America because I was working on that, and I thought, oh, I've got a few other. Th I have a few other things to say about that. <laughs> I have a lot to say. <laughs> hey, I have a YouTube channel. You got to talk on a YouTube channel, right? So I know I'm a have a talk. Okay, so first though, first, several people asked me about the um, the little banner that I was made for, you know, the YouTube channels. I don't know. Maybe it's time to retire it. I don't know. I don't have a zero, so I had to draw one, uh, and I don't know. Maybe, maybe we retire this now. We just sort of wait till we get to some sort of a larger number, like you know, 125 or something like that. You know, get to those rather than every 10,000. Although it takes a long time to get 10,000 uh, on here as subscribers. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know. I'm thinking. Let me know what you think. It normally hangs on, on the other side, just, you know, back on the wall. But let me know if you think it's time to retire it for a little while. I'm okay with that. <laughs> it's a wonderful. It's been a lot of fun to have it. Ah, it is also on Saturday, Fly a Kite Day. And I know there are great quilt blocks for kites out there. And so, and I know that we're going to do one that's paper pieced and doesn't really look like a physical kite, but that's what they're called. They're called kites. They probably have other names too, but we're doing that later because I need to shuffle my schedule. So on the calendar, you'll see that, but I'm looking for quilts that have like a real, looks like a real kite. So if you have one of those, share it on quilt along with Pat Sloan today. And if you would continue to do me a huge favor when you share in a Facebook group, if you would say, as Pat said today on her YouTube video, uh, just to let people know that I have a YouTube video, remind people that we might get more people who are watching that can get in on all the fun because the Facebook community, as I've been saying, they miss out on a lot because I talk here about everything uh, and I don't, you know, do videos in the Facebook group, mostly because there's no monetization there. You know, if I were to put my videos there, I don't make any income off of them. And so uh, it's not a good business decision to, to do that. <laughs> I need to have them here. Uh, and that's, that's, that's the behind the scenes on that and why that happens. Okay, okay. So we we have Heart of America and they are wee bitty blocks. Remember, this is a free pattern from the Fat Quarter Shop. So these stars, which, okay. Okay, so we're doing the, so they are the smallest. The The next stars for, this, for the big star point, I mean, the next half square triangles for the big star points, they're a bigger size. Uh, but these little babies, they make such darn cute little stars. Don't they look innocent? They take a freaking long time to make. They really do. But uh, if you care about making it look, you know, nice enough, uh, they take a little bit of time. But I have, I have four complete. I have another four almost done, almost done. I'm working on the sides. And then I have the four more, four more to do, I believe. Yeah, so that would be all of them. But let me show you. A couple of things one here and then we'll go to the machine so on on the little paper the triangles on the roll when I was doing these I figured out that I could trim the dog ears at this point so I can't cut sitting down but I'm just gonna do it today okay so here we go so we've got this guy and then what I figured out is the way I've trimmed a lot of things in the past work here so I did some tests and then I've been doing this. So I cut at that angle like that. And now you can see I've got the dog ears cut off. That way when I open it, here we'll take the paper off. So when I open it, I won't have to tr trim. I won't have to do anything because they're perfect size and the dog ears are already off. And so when I open this now, there are, I'm just gonna finger press it. There are no dog ears, so they're they're gone. There's no little pieces sticking out. What I mean by that, if you're kind of new to half square triangles and you don't know what, I'm going to get this so that it's not there. You can see it. So if I take the paper off of this one and open it, which I did do on the other video, um, but I'll do it again. So when I open this, you can see 
See the difference? That has the angled, or I'll hold it this way. This has the angles where I just trimmed it and here it doesn't. And so this one open like this. And then when I open the other, you're gonna see the dog ear. They're called dog ears. Quilt, some quilter named them that many moons ago. Uh, and you can see them really good this way. See how they're, let me hold the two together. See how you've got these, these little flags out here, these little flags out here. So you could just take them now and trim them like this. But I found that doing them while I cut the paper was the most efficient and fastest. And so I did, I did all of them. So these are all the ones, plus these two now ready for the last four blocks. But I wanna show you something else about sewing the rows. I'm gonna show you about sewing these rows and we'll go over to the machine. Before we get to the machine, I want to press this on my wool mat and then set the clapper on it to let it cool. And so let me just switch hands on the camera. So what I like to do first is sort of warm up the seam, which a lot of sewing people will tell you about. Maybe you've never tried it, so you might wanna try it. When you warm up the seam, it just makes it a little bit more pliable. So when you press it open, and I'm filming one-handed, when I press it open, now what I wanna do is this. Okay, feet came up. Whoops, sorry, so there we go. So I'm pressing, pressing, pressing. So it looks super good, and then clapper it. So I will, actually I will put two, I will put two under here and then one under the Riley Blake one and one under this, one, one under that one over there. And so I will just have them and I will let them cool because what it is is like the, you're, you're pressing them flat with an additional heavier um, piece of wood and then uh, the heat from the wool mat is sort of warming it up and making the fibers a little softer and more pliable so that they can take that pressure and keep that form when it cools. So when it cools, it'll cool nice and flat. All right, so I'm going to press all, let, get them all under the clapper, and then we're going to go ahead and I'll just give you my thoughts on sewing these rows together so that they're accurate. So a couple things that I do, because with the smaller pieces, it's just less forgiving. Uh, but I do this for a lot of things that I sew, where, see it's chain pieced, you know, they're together like this, it's chain pieced. I find these little chains to be in my way, because I need to flip open that seam and look where things are sometimes, and so I take them off. I don't like to use, I don't like them on there. Um, they're great for the piecing part, but you know this next step, I don't need them on there. And so, so for here, I've got an intersection on this side, and then my other intersection is blind. It's under underneath, um, and that's where the problem has. I nail this one, but coming over here, I need to peek underneath, and then I also need to be sure I don't shift anything with the smaller pieces. It's just less forgiving. It's just um, it's it's life you know it's life uh, and so here we go I'm going to pin like this and then we'll go to the machine so we're going to put the guide beam on you can see I'm just going to start a second there's no guide beam on yet and when I have the baby lock Solaris on I need to turn the guide beam on there we go give it a second and now there it is. So I am going to put this, it's got two guide beams, I just ignore that one. You can turn them off, you can you know, turn one or the other off. Uh, of course you can turn them all off, but I want them. And so I am going to go through there. So you go right through that intersection, which is great. And then I have the blind intersection coming up and this is what I have to do. So I pull this back and there I can see the guide beam. But now I need to be sure I don't shift, don't move, and that's why the pins are kind of important because sometimes when you're working, this these pieces down here could shift. So I've got them pinned, you know, further down, and then now I will show you. We'll just uh, cut it. I've got my leader over there, which. I could have done another one, but for the demo, I don't want to take time. So let me just pull the pins out. Okay, I'm right-handed, so pulling them out with my left hand is not the best. Okay, so there we go. When I press this, 
it's going to be right there and right there. So I'm happy with that. I am happy with that. Uh, so I just have more. Like I have four, five, seven, seven more, seven more, seven more stars to do. The next thing you want to do is measure. It's so important. I think even more important, the smaller the piece, because if you're off just a little bit, it just expands so fast and things get so out of whack. And remember, these are not on the half. So you're measuring four and one fourth, which is, you know, a little bit weird, but it all works out. And then just think after you make these stars, everything else is bigger. So I've got this little um, ruler. It's a four and a half inch ruler. And so I'm working off of the plus si uh, the um, full sizes on the grid. These, these rulers have, um, you know, half size markings and full size markings. And so to do the quarter inch, I want the full size marking. And for, for some miracle of miracles, this is pretty darn close. I have a little bit here. Do you see? Let me just, let me just there's a little bit on this one edge. There, you can see it, I think. See how that little bit is hanging out? You know, I could redo the whole thing, but I'm not for that. No, 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 I'm not. I am just going to trim that off, so that little bit. And now this guy is ready. He is totally ready, and he's the right size, so that when I start to do that circle of the stars with the heart in the middle, here, let me show you again. So when I start to put this, assemble this together, it'll be good. Now, I want to talk about the UFO stuff today. Yes, unfinished objects. For those of you who might be so new to quilting, you haven't heard of a UFO yet. Uh, sometimes I get weird comments if I put, you say if UFO, I get people like looking for extraterrestrial stuff and they leave me weird comments going, there's no UFOs in here. <laughs> I've had that like twice. I think it's so funny. Okay. <laughs> But I digress. Here we go. What do I have the status of? All right, so let's look at the, um, you know, the tulips. Also, people, don't write and ask me when some, where something is if I haven't showed you yet. People are like, why is, is that on your, why isn't on your door? No, don't write and ask any quilter why they haven't finished a project. No, this, that breaks the quilter's code. The, the, the quilters have a code you know, of code of conduct. We don't ask each other why we haven't finished something yet. Okay. So remember that code of conduct because I'm not going to answer you. <laughs> so here I did the vertical wave, the wave. So vertical wave. So it is ready now to get binding and you know me and binding, but I'm going to get it done. I'm going to get it done this weekend. It will be finished. And then I did the canning jars. So I have been on a roll. The canning jars are horizontal because it has this shelf. Because of that shelf um, and also like the jar lids, I just thought it was just, it has a nice, well, of course the jars themselves, right? It has a whole horizontal feel for this quilt. So horizontal was the correct option for me to use of, of the wave stitch. There we go. Then, the breakfast club. Okay. So I did not get to doing anything on the breakfast club, but I have thought about it. And the one thing that I think I am going to do, let me just show you this. I think what I do is I think what I'm going to do is the wave stitch like along the side, the horizontal. So the grid work, the border, and then what I'm going to do is free motion quilt on the inside of each of these. So I'll put on a different foot and free motion quilt because with applique, I just have a hard time quilting over top of applique with an overall design, especially when the primary thing of the quilt is applique. You know, it's not like there's just like one little thing here that that's fine. But if the whole quilt is just entirely all applique, well, I need to enhance it with some quilting around around the designs. And so I will do that. And when I get to that, which should hopefully be not too long, um, I will do some close up video of free motioning around it. I'll probably do maybe a little drawing 
show you on paper or on my computer, you know, kind of the concept I use because I use a very basic concept. I do not do fancy machine quilting. That is not in my wheelhouse. It's not something I do or enjoy. So I, I, I enjoy it if somebody else has done it, but I don't enjoy doing it. So I don't. So my stuff is all pretty simple. Okay, let me hang these back up. No, no, I can't hang them up because I want to show you something else. Hold on. First, Rena in Colorado sent me this beautiful note. Isn't this a pretty card? Thank you so much. And then I bought these because somebody in our group, and I, don't even I think it was our group, had gotten these Hello Kitty, you know, kind of rubberized thimbles. And I'm like, Hello Kitty thimbles? I must, I must own. I must own. And so the ambassadors helped me find them. And I will link below to where I got them on YouTube. But they're, you know, thimbles. I haven't tried them yet. But you, you know, you put them over. And I guess if you put the uh, Hello Kitty face, which is more, see the face has a little bit of um, bulk to it. <laughs> but look how cute they are. They're just so cute. So cute. Cute, cute, cute. I love, I love, I love. So I had to get those just the way life is sometimes you just have to get them okay ah I couldn't get off my finger okay so hold on so the UFO I want to look at is the shoe fly blocks so this is a shoe fly block which is different than a churn dash the churn dash has the half rectangles here like all around so that um, you know it, it has a, a, a different look a different look but I have got these many made however many this is and we're going to put them up on the design wall and then I have uh, this stuff left to sew which you know looks like it's not that many I have more extra parts so I have like a, a green here I have a green the yellow I've got a navy so that's only like three blocks like three blocks and then a hat these so I either could make two another set of these ginghams which I might do I might do and then I just took a pile of aquas and a pile of gold I have one of our friends sent sent me this isn't it so cute and I've used it in one of them all right so what are we gonna do so for my UFO discussion discussion several of you Several people, several people said, let's put them on point to see what they look like. So let's do it. Let's do it, do it, do it. Uh, I am not sure how they're going to look, how I'm going to like it. I tend to not be a fan of churn dashes and shoe flies on point. They just, for some reason, don't float my boat. But we're going to try it. We're going to try it because... Uh, who knows? Maybe I will fall in love with it. There's going to be sashing because I really do not want them touching. I don't want no touching, no touching. Don't want them touching. And so that means there's, I'm leaving some space between them. And I am not, now this, okay, so we'll do it this way first, just, just to put a little sample up. I won't put them all up, but here are the blocks on point with a block between so like I could do these touching because then I could just put a solid block in between do you see that you know that would be one way of approaching it which I kind of like I kind of like that but it's a lot of extra space you know I would personally want to make that light versus dark in between so let me just get a few more up and I'll, I'll grab the other camera so here, here they are. Well, I actually, I like them like this. Now there would be a blank you know, fabric in between. I have nine more blocks. If I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I would need, you know, ten more blocks uh, to finish that up, which would then give it a little bit bigger footprint or size but this could always have a border too but you know I still have nine blocks so I might as well use them but this actually gives it a bigger quilt than if I do it with sashing let me just quick put them closer together now here they are closer together what I did is just put them in those blank spaces and there's seven one two three four five six seven empty spaces which is also perfect it just means I have a couple extra and then if I did this size 
um, I would then do some kind of board, have to do some kind of border to make it a little bit bigger. That's a, more like, that's like, like a child. Actually, that could be like a child size or it could be a wall hanging. But they actually look nice like that too and they would be separated by sashing so they're not like banked up right against each other. So let me know. Which way, right? Let me know. Do you like the... Um more close where there would be a sashing like like you can see the closer up ones or would you be interested in seeing them you know would you do yours with a blank in between like you can see down there i think either way i can make it a decent size with what i have uh this way where they're closer together i would have two extra blocks because i have well, yeah, I wouldn't make, I wouldn't use some of those half square triangles to make the rest of them. So that way, yeah, I would, I would be good. Okay. So let me know. All right, my friend, I hope you are working on your heart of America. I will get my center done and on Monday or Tuesday, show you that. Uh, get yours done and share it in my Facebook group, quote along with Pat Sloan. So I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.